What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everyone between? Welcome to another new video. So, Love Victor Series 2 is coming out really, really soon, like tomorrow. And uh, I figured before we get into that, um, why don't we all just, like, you know, grab six pints of ice cream, um, Settlers of Catan board game, uh, Sleva Oreo cookies, and, you know, like a sinfully delicious tray leche cake. And, you know, like, sit down and talk about some of the great things that Love Victor did in his first series and some things that hopefully will be improved on in the up and coming series. Siri? 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 Siri, cue the opening credits! Waiting for the time, waiting for the place, and I. So, to start with, um, I think one of the first things that I love in Love, Victor is that, you know, Victor isn't the perfect guy. Like, with Love, Simon, like, I definitely understand people being upset because Simon was just, you know, a queer story with an affluent family that was all mostly liberal, and they weren't actually going to have a problem with him coming out. Screw you for having the world's most perfect accepting parents the world's most supportive friends. Because for some of us, it's not that easy. Where I'm from, $500 is a lot of money. But I guess at Creekwood, it's just a drop in the bucket. I mean, I guess I just never knew how you felt about that. What business is it of mine what some boys in your school are up to? Huh? Eh? I just hope that Tito's wrong and your little brother doesn't turn out that way. Anyway, I love you. Happy birthday, Mew. Love you too. And, you know, the story does make it pretty obvious from the beginning, and especially the book. The book actually, like, pretty much clearly goes out of its way early on to say that Simon it has no issue with coming out because of fear. This isn't, like, a scary, fearful moment for him. It is something that is about himself, about ownership of himself, about finding out who he is and not being told who he is because someone knows one aspect of him. It's really like, even though Love, Simon, and of course the book Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda is pushed very much as like a coming out story, it feels like it does fall under the broader scope of a coming of age story. Like, Simon is on self-discovery. He is finding out about himself, finding out about what he wants, and using Blue as, like, a conduit to do that. And really, in a way, becoming coming out as gay for him was just one small aspect of a much bigger journey that the whole story had to go through. With La Victor, on the other hand, you know, he has real fears, he has real hesitations, and real boundaries to overcome that, you know, I think a lot of people, especially other Hispanic people watching the show, will get. He has a highly religious, possibly Catholic family. And then there's the entire sort of macho culture of that is very Hispanically rooted. And Armando really does push this onto Victor a lot without even thinking about it or like seeing that it might be having an effect on Victor or might not be hitting the right way which will be interesting to see how they deal with coming up. And of course, too, the fact that this family is sort of more financially on the edge compared to Simon having a full house and multiple cars, just doing great. Victor doesn't have the kind of life that makes coming out the hardest thing ever. He has multiple issues and complications in his life. Even his coming out never really gets the chance to be a big event, a grand moment for him. Although, to be fair, you know, he has, like, managed to keep us thinking about it for, like, over a year now. But, like, it's an afterthought following a traumatic event on what perhaps might have been the most repeatedly traumatizing night of his life thus far. For all of that stuff going on, the coming out is honestly so small and, like, 
overshadowed by so many other things going on in his life. And that is honestly sort of fantastic because, you know, this wasn't just a story about his coming out and him coming out doesn't solve all his problems and make everything better. He still has separated parents. He still has Mia to deal with, Andrew to deal with. He still has the school to deal with. And yeah, we're going to see a lot, I think, of interesting things come out in series two with that. On the plus side, all those stairs are killer for your dates. Uh, who are these people? Uh, you think that we could afford an apartment in Brooklyn with no roommates? I'm Justin with a soft J like Josh. I'm Victor. I'm Ivy. I'm Kim. And before you ask, my pronouns are they, them, theirs. Oh, okay. Nice to meet they. <laughs> so what's your deal? My deal? If I had to express a more negative thought for this show, I would say the closet has opened too slow. Um, the narrative of Love, Victor feels like the movie of Love, Simon, where we don't really get to see many other gays or LGBT people in general at Creekwood. And in the book, Simon ends up fighting, you know, First of all, there is the other gay character, the, you know, full-on stereotypical gay right down to the wig. But then also in the book, Simon ends up finding out about Cal, the pianist in the theater class, um, is bisexual because he comes out and such. And this spurs on the thought that Cal might be blue. And it leads to what is perhaps one of my favorite moments in the book that is so organic and beautifully free and delicious and it only crashes and burns between these two because Cal isn't blue and Simon figures it out and all Simon cares about is finding blue but I think that the beauty of this scene is that Simon had such a great connection with someone it wasn't blue it gets rid of that whole destined lovers aspect that you know maybe he could have gone with Cal maybe he could have had just as great a relationship that could have been just as fantastic with Cal as it ends up being with Bram and I feel like Love Victor did sort of stick us in that same area it's very destined lovers we get Victor Benji and Derek and you know Derek is a vile and acidic personality and he really only serves as a roadblock but He's so undesirable, he doesn't even feel like a roadblock, just like a little pothole that they have to like go across, you know. It, it slows him down, but it's not really standing in their way. And I feel like we should have had more LGBT inclusion in the first series, outside of course like episode 7. Like, what if Simon had other gay friends at the school? What if he managed to come out to someone before he... Uh, you know, unceremoniously came out to Benji. Uh, with so many LGBT people watching this show outside of just people that are gay, I do wish there was more of us outside of one episode. And it does seem like Series 2 is already poised to answer this and fix this issue, so I'm looking forward to that. Who is that? Hey, I couldn't remember if we said 7 or 7.15. So you showed up at 6.45? 6.40. I stood outside your door for five minutes before knocking. I didn't want to seem too eager. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mia. Victor. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about her. No, it's cool. No one's really been that excited to take my picture since my mom used me as a model for her piano lesson flyers, so. Wow, you were a piano lesson model. So in terms of the casting, I kind of have a hot take, like a really, really hot, hot, hot take. And like, for a very good reason, I and a lot of other people, you know, are repeatedly saying that we need more LGBT actors cast in stuff, and especially more LGBT actors in LGBT roles, because LGBT actors already do have trouble with getting good casting regularly. And on top of that, that they can't even get cast in roles that, you know, they literally were born for. It kind of sucks. But all things considered, I actually feel like there is a lot more value in our current cast being very strong, positive, and genuinely supportive allies than in if they were actually out. I feel like when it comes to consuming gay media that uh, 
we go through like two major stages, which is like the first one is more like, am I okay as gay, bi, lesbian? And then as you get older, it turns into, am I equal, am I valued? In one case, you just want validity. In the other case, you want to be seen for your worth, seen for a person, not just as a minority, not just as something othered. And both of these are important aspects, but I feel like this show does, this show is definitely a family show, which is a very weird concept, which is very unique to America. We don't really have like young adult shows here in America. And it's kind of, I do feel like it shuts down some stuff, but it also gives some potential. But like, I feel like for the major target audience of Love, Victor, which would be like the young teens, younger teens area, I do feel like seeing allies is going to be a much stronger thing because like, if only gay actors were playing the gay characters and doing the gay things in this show, that would honestly just make it feel even more othered. Because I... Okay, so the only person doing gay stuff here is actually gay. Like, no one wanted to do this unless they were gay. It's It, it just sort of feels like no one is stretching out of their supposed or cultural comfort zone but a straight ally not only playing a gay character but genuinely loving his role and beaming over the positivity that role puts out that is utterly beautiful and magical and i can't imagine how amazing it would be to be that tiny me in the closet again seeing a straight guy not just pretend to be like me but having nothing bad to say and being so excited to share that with his audience, it, that really does to me make it feel so normal, so accepted, and I think that's like the most powerful thing I can imagine. I, uh, thought you never passed your driver's test. That wasn't exactly true. I have a license. It's just suspended. Why? What happened? Before I came out, I was kind of a mess. I knew I was gay, but I didn't want to be, so I drank a lot. Truth is, I'm not ready. I don't know, maybe out here sex isn't like a big deal, but back where I'm from, we're more old fashioned. I know that guy. That's dad's old boss. I thought Ramon was his old boss. Ramon was the foreman. This, this guy was the big boss. I met him at the company holiday party back in Texas. I don't get it. How would mom even know his big boss? And why would they? Let's go. Another thing I'd love is that this show is actually being able to tackle a lot of difficult and scary themes, but it's done so in a way that isn't going like full euphoria. Like, okay, the euphoria discussion is for another time. I need to get more into that show, but I kind of just want to say, like I said again, you know, America doesn't really have a full young adult market. So, any kind of show that comes out for that audience kind of either has to get picked to the kid market and become like battle or get picked to the adult market and of course it's gonna you know be adultish it's not gonna like have that freedom <clears throat> and love victor has managed to like do pretty good for where it is being a more like kid oriented but still family show it has hit on pretty serious stuff like in a casual moment just confessing things Benji admits to not just underage drinking but sort of a situational alcoholism as part of his closeting that you know leads to his Wendy's drive-thru accident 
And Mia's entire story is just like steeped in her own toxic jealousy and abandonment issues that in some weird way becomes more unreasonable as her life becomes more balanced and more like what she wished it would be. Her father is a more consistent stay-at-home dad now. He has a wife, well not yet wife, but he has a girlfriend that is actually present and eagerly present, not just reluctantly pleasant like present like Mia's own mother was. And it's like, even though Victor was lying and hiding things from her, she didn't know that. So I do judge a lot of her jealousy issues that she has with Victor, like having a work thing or going off with his father. I'm judging a lot of those at face value because she was being very toxically like possessive and jealous and dismissive of his life outside of her and again I know he was lying he was going off to New York he was spending the night with Benji because of his own like desires that he was still trying to understand but Mia didn't know any of that yet as far as she knew those were all honest truthful things that he was doing and for her to judge them as harshly as she did when they were that kind of rubs me the wrong way and I feel like Mia is like going down a bad way and there is a part of me that wants to see her go full villain mode in series two but I do think they will at least like address her issues and see her come towards a more stable normality and of course too I think one of the best things was that whole familial moment between Felix and Lake where they get to see snippets of each other's lives it's heart-wrenching and it's a beautiful sort of testament to, like, toxic, well-wishing family can really almost destroy their children. Lake is, like, put into such a black hole of feeling worthless and feeling like she isn't good enough because of her mother, of all people, just trashing her the way she did and doing it with a smile and saying, I just want you to be the best. And... Felix responding to that by showing her that he was given gifts, he was given happiness and joy, but all of that joy that he had was part of a lie, part of a desperate attempt by his mother to avoid her own depression, her own issues. And then it turned into something that is very evidently still affecting him and still affecting her to this very day. But he won't let it define him even though it's an ever-present issue in his life. And he tries to pass that wisdom onto Lake. It's a really strong and lovely moment in this show and kind of shocking almost. In fact, honestly, <clears throat> my only gripe with this show in terms of like at things like this is the cheating storyline with Armando and Isabel. It's utterly pathetic, even by family TV standards. Her horrendous crime that is a shadow over the entire first series is having a conversation with and bonding with a guy until eventually he makes a pass, in which case she shuts it down immediately. In other words, literally nothing happened. She had a friend. She had a buddy. And yeah, he misinterpreted everything, but... And she... According to everything she said, as soon as it turned physical, she shuts it down. It's like, so what, you guys are just like in a low-key, toxic, monogamous relationship since high school, and you don't really know how to develop a friendship with a guy, so you just misinterpret signals until it gets a little bit further than you would like it to be? It's like, what? And I guess, like, in a way, it does make sense, because toxic monogamy culture is just rife. And the way that some utterly stupid things can be considered the pinnacle of cheating does kind of fit into that. And especially too, when you consider that that toxic monogamy things blending over into Hispanic cultural expectations, it kind of feels a little better. But still, this is all everything with the parents, the trust issues, the paranoia, the secrets. It's happening over words nothing more words and friendship that got misinterpreted by someone who wasn't isabel 
They all are. It's a gay league. We play here twice a week. I just wanted you to see that there's no one way to be gay. Right? You can be femme, you can be butch, athletic, or in Simon's case, painfully unathletic. <laughs> <laughs> My parents would have me put on this gorgeous ensemble and walk around the neighborhood and try to convince people to join a religion that I knew wanted nothing to do with me. As you can probably tell, I was not loving my life. It was... It was a dark time. Anyway, that was putting on a character. That was drag. This is just me being me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It literally brings us a whole delicious cast of, you know, hashtag actually queer representation. And the episode does a beautiful job of hinting at the fuller potential of being LGBT. Bram has no problem showing Victor like the machismo of the basketball court, glittering with a full gay league of men. So mask presenting that, you know, Victor's shocked. Even a hint that there's more to them than this mask presentation they have, with one little wonderful throwaway line. You should see him in high heels. And the gorgeous private moment of that was a disguise. That was drag. And for all the times I hear people complain about Love Victor and say that's just another straight, friendly, palatable mask gay, I really wonder if they actually sat through this episode, because it sort of really does lay down the groundwork for what upcoming series of the show could do. Victor, as we saw him in series one, is drag. Victor is living, you know, with the specific knowledge that he has a family that is religious, that is Hispanic, that has these expectations, and also knows that he is, might be, is kinda, might possibly be, okay, definitely is, gay, bi, confused something definitely something and definitely not 100 percent straight he, he knows what he fears and what his roadblocks are so he's definitely going to put up walls and protect himself and do things to ensure that those issues do not come up that he gets to hide from them so i do feel like even though i feel like victor is sort of a very openly genuine person for the most part i do feel like we got to see a lot of victor in drag and that series two and onwards is going to be as victor that actually knows who he is and is actually willing to explore himself and i did mention this earlier in my old coming out video that it's really scary in a way that once you come out you have to relearn so many things about yourself because all these things that you thought were you know just you or things you're okay with or how you are as a person end up actually being disguises you didn't even know you were putting on to hide your sexuality. You guys been drinking? What? Drinking? I've never been sober or... or... No, no. Too many errors. Go home, have a glass of water, sleep it off. Go ahead. You come inside before your mom hears. Not in front of people who aren't my mom, no. But I've been practicing for months and I'm definitely ready. Hi. Sir, uh, today's my best friend Victor's birthday. This cake is his favorite dessert in the whole wide world. So, is there any chance you'd be willing to take a different cake? No. Well, I'm, uh, I'm sorry you feel that way. Like, run. What the? I said run! Go, go, go! Felix, what are you doing? Hurry, hurry! You need to make sure to upgrade your settlements, your cities, and your roads. All right. So, next, when he finally finds her, you know what he does? Tells her a long, boring story. He bites her and releases this enzyme in his saliva that fuses them together like super glue. Then he dies and becomes a part of her body and she swims away, never thinking about him again, but he doesn't mind because he got what he always wanted, to be with her forever. That's what you deserve. Like, a guy who would sacrifice everything because he knows that the only thing that matters in this entire world is you. 
My final issue with this show, and this is a big one, a big, fat negative that almost makes the show unwatchable. Felix is not the pansexual god for the abolition of gender norms and gender in general that we need. Okay, uh, to be fair, like, I love Felix. He is, like, the best character ever. And he and Lake are adorable together. But, like, again, this show is so sort of destined queers in isolation. Because you only get two of them. Three, sort of. Derek is questionable. But, like, I would have loved to see more diversity. And Felix just felt like such a prime candidate for that. And again, I get he's fixated on Lake, and I do think that they are actually really, really charming together, and I want to see them flourish in series two, because they're adorable. But I would have loved to see, like, more variety in the main cast, and Felix just has all of this gorgeous, wholesome loveliness to him, unproblematic perfection that... I feel like it would have been so cute and so easy to make him buy, pan, something. I would have loved that. But yeah, this is me talking about uh, La Victor Series 1, the stuff it did, the stuff it didn't do, the stuff it should do, what I'm excited for in Series 2. And yeah, if you enjoyed this, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. And of course, remember, life always gets better as long as you work at it brick by brick. Now roll the end credits. Dancing in the rain,